The trick to it is don't set down a path where you can't get the technology where you need it to be within one production cycle, because otherwise you'll, you'll fall on your face. So fortunately, the, these Avatar films I'm doing right now are such a big project that we had literally years ahead of time to develop, uh, we had literally years ahead of time to develop the new techniques that we needed. So I've, I've looked at technology fr from, from both ways. One is you can create what I think of as the grand provocation. You can write something that can only be solved by creating something new that didn't exist before. And that's cool, that's fun. Because at the very least, I know we're going to be showing the audience something they haven't seen before because nobody's done it before. And I enjoy that. On the other hand, I've, I've also known that it's a good idea to watch the landscape and see what other engineers and other creators, other directors, other artists are doing and, and see them moving the technique forward and get excited by that, get inspired by that, say, ah, okay. If they're able to do that, then I might be able to do this thing that I had in the back of my mind for a long time. So it's a bit of a feedback loop, and it's a bit of a, a sort of a cycle of inspiration. And as I, I'm sure most people know, the Avatar films are a mixture of live action photography and performance capture. Performance capture is you know, where we, we put the actors into what we call a volume. And in that volume, we're able to capture, literally capture their performance. I would say practically at a molecular level of accuracy. So to tell the story I wanted to tell, uh, which was about the oceans of Pandora, we had to create this new technique, which was how do we capture our human actors in and under the water, in the same way that we were capturing them in what would become a rainforest environment on the first film. So we weren't doing the rainforest. You see the rainforest in Avatar 2, but then we leave it behind and we go to, we go to the ocean. So how do you do that? Well, I think the best thing to do when I can imagine something and I can see it in my mind, and I don't know exactly how to do it, and I know how to do just about everything that has been available to do. I've had the, fortunately, I've had the access to all the cool tools over the years. So if I can't quite figure out how we're gonna do it, I just get a bunch of smart people around me that I, that I know that are, whether they're engineers or whether they're camera people or whether they're uh, computer graphics artists or code writers, and we sit and we talk about it. I say, well, can we do this? And they may say, no, we're not ready to do that. And that's okay. And I say, all right, well, what if we threw some money and some time and some smart people at it for a while? Could we figure it out? And that's sort of what happened on, on uh, Avatar 2 and 3, you know, because we have all these water scenes. We had to figure out, you know, how are we going to do performance capture? Because these characters don't exist in the real world in a way that we can photograph them. We have to capture the actor's performance and use the tools of virtual production to create these characters that have these giant you know, yellow eyes and ears and tails and they're nine feet tall and that sort of thing. And an actor can't do, they can't play that physically. They can play the essence of the, of the character. Um, but how do we do that in water? Never been done before. So I just get a bunch of smart people and we start talking about it. And ideas come up and we say, well, there's this, you could do it this way or that way or that way. And, and sometimes, you know, I have to not only just provide the, the provocation or the, the idea, if you will, but I also have to like, all right, guys, we're doing this. So start thinking, you know, takes a little bit of uh, a push from behind to get things to go to the next level. And that's, that's exactly how it played out on the Avatar films. Um, it, took, uh, it took two years and a lot of money and time and effort to figure it out, but we, we cracked the code. And then from our prototype, we were able to build a huge uh, tank for capturing the performances. 120 feet long, it had a big wave maker at one end and it had the ability to generate strong currents. Because what we figured is we, we can have the actors zipping around on on creatures, motorized uh, creatures zipping through the water. That's dangerous and it's hard to film. Or we can bring the movement of the ocean to them and shoot them in a kind of a wind tunnel 
where we could zoom in and get their performances and, and, uh, very accurately. So we built essentially an underwater wind tunnel that could generate a current of up to 10 knots and our actors are holding on for dear life, you know, on these, uh, on these creatures. And they learned how to do that. And of course, everybody loved it, you know. Uh, everybody loved the challenge of it. But, you know, ultimately we switched from, normally performance capture is done with a marker suit in a volume that could be like this stage. But you have all these infrared cameras that are looking at the markers. Well, infrared doesn't work underwater, so we went to ultraviolet, so ultraviolet LEDs, and then you had to figure out, well, what are you gonna do with the water surface? Because it acts like a moving mirror and it reflects all the markers. And so now there's all kinds of wrong markers, and the computer's gotta figure out which ones are the wrong markers from the right markers so it knows where the people are and how they're moving. Well, we figured that out. And the way we figured it out was we put little white plastic balls all over the surface of the water that sat just below the surface and broke that reflection. So the computer didn't have all those false marker reflections to deal with. So things like that, you know, innovation, you know, imagination. You know, as much as I love the imagination of storytelling and imagining other worlds, I also love the imagination required to solve hard technical problems. That's another form of human imagination. And I love that just as much. So if we get to finish this thing out, it's an epic story told over, over time of people that hopefully we've come to care very much about and we want to see what happens to them. So once again, the heart and that universal sense of connection with the characters, but in a, in a world that's uh, of kind of infinite fractal quality um, and always surprising. The key to, I think, any film, but to keeping Avatar alive and constantly refreshing and constantly having farther and farther horizons is surprise. Whatever happens next, you, you may think you have a sense of what an Avatar movie is going to be. Sorry. It's not that. <laughs>